Welcome back to another edition of Penn State Sports Night. I'm DJ Bauer here alongside Zach Seiko, and we have another exciting show for you tonight as our experts break down Penn State men's basketball and their future. And we have our very first Penn State Sports Night NFL Mock Draft of the Year. Before we get to that, let's go back to college basketball. Tony Carr held a press conference today where he declared his intent to enter the NBA Draft and sign with an agent. Now, obviously Tony Carr was one of the most talented players on the roster. There seems to be quite a few instances this season where he pretty much single-handedly won the game for Penn State. So tell me, what are your thoughts on this decision? Well, I think it is a premature decision for Mr. Tony Carr. Tony Carr, he, as you mentioned, he was single-handedly carried this team to victory at some points. We saw the Ohio State game on the road. But I think that he could have really built up his resume with another season as a junior. This is a good core, and him entering the draft, his grade is between a late first round, and that's his ceiling, is a late first round, and his basement is undrafted free agent. So we'll see what happens when all said and done. Hopefully he has a good combine and good workouts and impresses some basketball clubs. So, so Carr may be gone, but at least we're getting another banner in the BJC to show for it. Thanks to the team's 82-66 victory over Utah in the NIT Championship last Thursday. Now, Penn State basketball may be over, but lacrosse is just getting hot. You're right, DJ. Penn State jumps back into the rankings this week, up to number 18 after their 12-4 win at Ohio State last Saturday. Sophomore goalie Colby Kniece had his best game of the year, recording 16 saves on the day. But the defense was not the only impressive part. Senior Ryan Keenan put up a hat trick and junior Kevin Hill added two goals of his own. It seems like this team is getting hot at just the right time as they will host the defending champs, number two Maryland, this Sunday at Panzer Stadium. No doubt it will be a tough test for the lacrosse team. As for other upcoming events, set your calendar for Saturday, April 21st. Blue White is coming back to Penn State and there's more in store for Penn State students and fans. Aside from the annual Blue White game held at 3 p.m. at Beaver Stadium, those in attendance can participate in a variety of other fun activities. So what does Penn State have in store for the community? Well, there certainly isn't a shortage of things to do. There's the ever-popular autograph session being held from 12.15 to 1.05 p.m. at Beaver Stadium. There's Fan Fest, the official Penn State football festival, all morning on Curtin Road. If that's not your thing, Penn State alum LeVar Arrington will be in attendance hosting the A11 Stars Bowl at Beaver Stadium at 10 a.m. If you're looking for some family fun, the Blue White Family Fun Zone will be open from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Haluba Hall. And don't forget about the ninth annual Paterno Family Fun Walk to benefit Special Olympics, Pennsylvania at 11 a.m. Well, if you're planning on going to Blue White, you'll have a tough time being bored. In addition to Blue White, Penn State has another exciting opportunity on April 6th and 7th. James Franklin and the football team will be hosting Chalk Talk for local high school and middle school coaches. A special guest will be in attendance, former Penn State head coach and current Houston Texans head coach, Bill O'Brien. So there's a lot going on in the Penn State community this month, Zach. Absolutely, DJ. But let's get on with the show. We've got a lot to get to, including our first PSSN NFL Mock Draft of the Year. But before that, let's pass it over to Brendan Pfeiffer and Hunter Pickoff with Penn State Hoops. Welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Brendan Pfeiffer alongside Hunter Pickoff, who's here to talk some Penn State basketball. But before we dive into it, we had some breaking news come out of University Park earlier today. Sophomore sensation Tony Carr has declared for the NBA draft, and he has indicated that he will hire an agent, meaning that he is not going to come back. He's not eligible to come back. Hunter, was this a good or a bad decision by Tony Carr? I was shocked that he hired an agent. I can understand, you know, testing the waters a little bit, seeing for sure where you know you'll land in the draft i think he's trying to make a quick buck basically because i don't think he's making the first round there's a ton of point guards i my personal opinion ranked ahead of him nonetheless though tony Gross is a super talented guy and i think penn state is really in an awful situation right now i think they're just basically going to be just as good as they were last year but i don't know if they're going to you know obviously make the nit tournament you know tony carr is maybe the most talented player penn state's had in years basically Great score, you know, a great assist man too, and he's always like a triple double threat as well. Right. Um, he's leaving a big legacy. Um, I think if he does succeed in the NBA, that will help with recruiting most definitely for Penn State. But if you're looking at it right now, the immediate impact, I think Penn State will be significantly worse than they were this year. And what really doesn't make sense to me is he could have tested the waters for the draft without hiring an agent. Because yeah. him hiring an agent, he's not eligible to come back. So it's, it doesn't really help his cause that he's hiring an agent because he has to go through with his NBA draft process. And if he gets drafted by a late round team, he might not crack the rotation because chances are maybe he gets picked up by like, you know, the Golden State Warriors, the Houston Rockets or the Spurs. Exactly. And it's going to be really hard for him to crack the rotation. So 
I wasn't really sure what he was thinking. I think he should have, you know, at least t test the waters for the NBA draft, but don't hire an agent. But nevertheless, he's not the only player that Penn State's losing. They're going to lose Shep Garner as well, who statistically is Penn State's best three-point shooter of all time. Do you think there's a player that Penn State has currently or someone coming in who can replace the greatness of Shep Garner? I don't think so because, you know, Penn State, him and Tony Carr were really only, like, excellent three-point shooters they had. They really um, almost spread the floor, so to speak, and let Mike Watkins work in the paint. They let Lamar Stevens, you know, he's a great mid-range player, too. Uh, so I think Shep Garner, uh, the three-point shooting, obviously, he's a marksman. Uh, obviously, his mother, number one fan for Penn right. State. They're going to lose that great fan base that, you know, they have as well. But, um, yeah, the leadership by Chef Garner is very vital. I don't know who's going to step up. Maybe it's Lamar Stevens. Maybe it's Mike Watkins. You know, that's a big question mark, too, because I think on-court leadership is a huge deterrent for success for a basketball program. Penn State right now is lacking that. I 100% agree with you, Hunter, but just because they're losing Chef and Tony Carr, there's no reason for this Penn State basketball program to uh, hang their heads. They win their first NIT championship since 2009. You still have Lamar Stevens coming back. You have Mike Watkins, who's going to come back from injury. You know, you got a couple of upcoming freshmen who are supposed to be pretty good. Miles Dredd, a top 100 player, according to ESPN. Who do you suspect could have a breakout year for this Penn State basketball team? Because it's going to have a pretty big void to fill with Tony Carr leaving and with Chef Garner. Yeah, so the backcourt right now is vacant. I think Nazir Bostic, you know, he was primarily a rotation player. I think he's going to take on 30-plus minutes for Penn State this year. Although he's not a great shooter and he needs to work on that in the offseason, I love the athleticism he brings, the energy. You know, he's a blue-collar worker. Uh, I think that he's going to provide a nice spark. You know, he's... Uh, not, again, not a great shooter, but he's very good with the ball in his hands. He knows how to pass and facilitate and an excellent defender. He's one player. And then looking at the front court, which I think Penn State's going to rely on a little bit more this year, uh, John Hara, you know, he had a uh, great NIT performance uh, relieving uh, Mike Watkins, obviously, as you alluded to before, was injured. I think that, yeah, he's not a huge stats shuffler by any means, but, like, he can, you know, set great screens, great rebounder, and I think he plays very good defense as well. Uh, having him come off the bench and uh, provide some extra minutes, I think uh, for a sophomore year coming up, I think he's going to play a much bigger role with Penn State. And Hunter, I agree with you on that part. But that's going to do it from us. We're going to send it over to DJ Bauer and Jeffrey Morgan, who bring us the first edition of the PSSN Mock Draft 1.0. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Penn State Sports Night alongside DJ Bauer and Jeffrey Morgan. I'm Christian Kirkpakis, and it's time for Penn State Sports Night's first ever NFL Mock Draft. We had the guys pick their first round. Now, little disclaimer, we have not accounted for trades. So whatever the order is right now, you will see on this mock draft. Jeff, we'll start with you. Take it away. All right, DJ. My first pick in the draft is Sam Darnold going to the Browns. I have the first three picks as quarterbacks. Obviously, quarterbacks rule the NFL. So you're going to see a lot of quarterbacks go early in this draft in my version of the mock draft. Then we go fourth to Saquon Barkley. Now, Saquon is the most talented running back in the draft. He's the most talented player in the draft. But I have him drop into four simply because he's a running back and running back is a position that I don't know if it warrants a first, second, or third overall pick. But at four, with the Browns having the first overall pick, they can afford to take Saquon. Then five, rounding out my top five, is Quentin Nelson of Notre Dame. He's going to go to the Broncos and sure up their line next to Gareth Bowles. Now I'm going to go to Roquan Smith. He's going to go to Washington. He's going to sure up that defense right there in the middle of that defense. He tore up college football last year. That's a great pick for Washington. Actually, he might be falling in that mock compared to what most people have him, but I think that's where he ends up. 15, I have Lamar Jackson going to the Cardinals. Lamar Jackson has been an elite talent from the speed point of view and his arm strength. Now, with the Arizona Cardinals taking him, they can select a quarterback that can grow in that system next to David Johnson, who they have a great running back, and they can continue with their team as him with him at the helm. After that, I would go to Mike Kosicki. The Penn State tight end goes to the Lions here. Mm. You're adding a weapon for Stafford. Eric Ebron left, and Eric Ebron never really panned out. But I do think that Stafford liked having a tight end that they could go to in the system. They don't really have any running back help, so I do think that they take a running back later in the draft. After that, we go to Orlando Brown with the Bills here. 
Earlier in my draft, if you noticed, I had Baker Mayfield going to the Bills. So here they draft that tackle that will be the bookend for their offensive line. They can put him in there. He'll be fine for the next 10 years. Protect Baker Mayfield's blind side. Hopefully that shores it up for Sean McDermott and his team. And then last of my players to look at is Leighton Vander Esch. He's going to come in. He's going to shore up that Avery Williamson spot that the Tennessee Titans have been missing. They need that linebacker in their system. Leighton has been lighting up draft boards. He might rise later in the month as we get closer to the draft. But right now, I have him going 25 to the Titans in my version of this year's mock draft. All right. Now, I, we do have questions. I do have questions about your mock draft. But first, we're going to go over to DJ's uh, first round mock draft. Now, DJ, you got the floor. All right, well, I am also taking Sam Darnold with the first overall pick. I think the Browns are most comfortable with him. We've seen John Dorsey likes him. I think that's a safe bet. Number two, I'm picking Josh Rosen. There are a lot of options that New York could go here. They could trade down. They could go with Bradley Chubb because they just sent away Jason Pierre-Paul. But I think that while the quarterbacks are available, they're going to take Josh Rosen. Number three for the Jets. I'm differentiating a little bit here. I think they take Baker Mayfield. I think the Jets and the Jets fan base... Uh, definitely likes Baker Mayfield a little bit better than Josh Allen. I have him falling over down here to Buffalo. But I think this is a really a wide-open draft, and they could take anyone that they think is good and available. And just like you, I have Saquon Barkley at number four. Now, mm -hmm. this guy's a generational talent, and Absolutely. some people have him going into the top three. I just don't see it just because that the quarterback potential is here in this draft, and they want to grab onto it early. But because the Browns have two of the top four picks, they're able to afford letting Saquon draft to number four. And number five, I have, just like you, Quentin Nelson, going to the Broncos. I think a lot of people agree that he is the second most talented player in this draft after Saquon Barkley. Really a freak of nature at the guard position at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. I like him to go to the Broncos and help sure up that offensive line. Rarely do you see a guard go that high. It's pretty impressive to see him go that high. Some other notable names here. I really like uh, Mike Hughes going to the Packers. I originally had him a lot lower in my draft following all treats. But then I realized that the, Patri the Packers rather have a serious problem with the cornerback. They just mm -hmm. sent away their best corner in Demarius Randall. And I think they like Mike Hughes the best. They might go Josh Jackson from Iowa or maybe someone like Jerry Alexander from Louisville. But I like Mike Hughes to go here. And another big name to look out for, like I mentioned earlier, is Josh Allen. This is a guy that a lot of people also have going into the top three spots. I think that if the Bills are wary and that they think Josh Allen is going to be taken before the number 12 spot, they may try to do that trade up with the Giants and get into the top two. I think that they like Allen the best. Mm -hmm. So on to the second part here of my first round. A couple key names that I want to point out here. Mike McGlinchey, uh, offensive tackle from Notre Dame. He, I think, has gotten a lot of speculation going high in the draft just because he got to play on that awesome uh, Notre Dame offensive line. Got a lot of experience there and obviously Seattle has had some serious struggles on the offensive line. Russell Wilson's been running around like crazy with nobody to protect him. So I think that they are going to look for an offensive lineman here in the first round. I also want to point out Leighton Vander Esch. This is a guy that I thought was going to fall to Pittsburgh since you know they're a, a, a scene that, team that takes linebackers a lot in the first round. But I like him rising up to 23. I think his draft stock is rising, and he might go even higher than that. And obviously with Alec Ogletree gone, the Rams are looking for a linebacker too, so I like him going there. And one more name, of course, i got to talk about here is Mike Kosicki. Mm -hmm. Both of us have Mike Kosicki going into the first round, which not Absolutely. a lot of experts do. But I think just the way that he showed up at the Combine, just athletically insane. And the Saints are looking for a tight end. Kobe Fleener has not been the answer, so why not take a big tight end like Kosicki? Mm -hmm. All right, now a couple questions for both of you guys, and I'll start right back at the beginning of the first round. Can you guys see anyone else not named Sam Darnold go number one? Can you see that happening in any way? I could. If Allen had better numbers, if Rosen was a little bit different size and hasn't his uh, college coach wasn't kind of bashing him lightly yeah. today. Um, but, I mean, I don't see anyone but Darnold. To me, he's the number one overall pick. Barkley could from a sheer talent point, but the Browns don't need to because they can get him at four, so they wouldn't need to spend that pick on him. I think it depends on all on what the Browns are thinking. Do they think they can grab Saquon Barkley at four? Do they think that the Jets or the Giants are going to surprise everyone and take him instead? Even then, there are other options. I know that their defensive backs are not that great. They might look for Minka Fitzpatrick or somebody like that. So I think that they, I'm pretty sure that they're going to take Darnold with number one. I think that's mm -hmm. the guy that they like. But who knows? It's the Browns. They could surprise anybody. They could take Barkley mm -hmm. number one. We'll find out in April. And if the Browns do it right, they can look scary next season. They could actually be a winning Browns team. Now, I'm going to move to the second pick right now. 
Giants fans, you look on Giants Twitter page, Instagram page, everyone's commenting, Barkley, Barkley, we want Saquon, we want Saquon. Do you see a scenario where the Giants say, okay, let's give Eli Manning a little bit more of a window with Odell Beckham, Saquon Barkley, Evan Ingram, and Sterling Shepard. Put those weapons around him to say, hey, give us one more push. Do you see that happen anyway? So one of the beautiful things about the NFL and one of the worst things about the NFL is that the offensive line and defensive line rule the game. Saquon Barkley can't block for himself, and the Giants aren't ready to take on that first around running back, top five pick, that is still gonna need an offensive line like Ezekiel Elliott had in Dallas. I mean, you can bring him into that system all you want and put him with all those weapons and Eli, but Eli can't block and neither can Saquon. So unless someone's there to sure up the trenches, I don't see Saquon being the pick for them. I think they're either, they're gonna take a quarterback and start looking for the future with this new regime that's coming in after Ben McAdoo's departure. Again, nothing is certain. Saquon Barkley could very well go at number two, but I think that there are bigger fish to fry for the New York Giants. If, it, if anybody other than a quarterback, I think it could be Bradley Chubb, especially right. with Jason Pierre-Paul now in Tampa Bay. It's a possibility. But I really think that they're going to look for a quarterback because Eli Manning probably has, what, max three years left? If that. They want a guy that Eli is going to be able to groom there for a little bit, somebody that can learn under him, a guy who's won two Super Bowls. I think it's going to be the smartest decision for them to take a quarterback. Now, can you guys see a scenario where the Giants trade out of that pick or go, like you said, Bradley Chubb? Uh, I think if there's an enticing deal, you can't turn down any deal that is more valuable to you than the second round, or second overall pick. Um, obviously, they're open to any deals that come their way, and they're going to look at them with a keen eye and mm -hmm. take that into consideration. The Giants have been a good franchise, so they're not going to rule out anything. Good franchises don't. Do, good franchises don't do that. So the Giants will look to do whatever's possible for them, what they think is best for the organization in the long run. I think that the most likely possibility is that they're going to trade down with the Bills because I think the Bills have made some serious moves in this draft. They shipped Tyrod Taylor to the Browns. They got the Chiefs pick here in this draft. I think it's possible that the Bills stay on the move and move up to that number two spot and in return the Giants get both of their first rounders. It's a possibility. Not exactly sure how it's going to work out, but I do think it's, it's very likely that the Bills could move up and the Giants move down out of that top five. Right, one player we kind of have to talk about, Penn State's own Mike Kosicki. I was a little surprised you had him in the, going in the first round, especially at number 20, going to the Lions. Now, yeah, he's a good athlete, great receiver, great red zone threat. I feel like you guys overlooked his uh, shortcomings in the blocking game. I really do. Well, NFL tight ends aren't really true tight ends that we used to have in the NFL. There's no blocking tight ends that are surely blocking guys. You see a lot of Jimmy Graham's where he lines up more as a wide receiver or... Franck, where yes, Franck is a freak athlete, he's a blocking animal, and he can do what he does in the passing game, which he's the best tight end in the NFL, but Gesicki is an athletic freak, and I've said it for a long time, Gesicki's 40 will tell me where he's going. I saw early reports that he was gonna run a 4.7, and he did not run anywhere near a 4.7. So, to me, that shot him up the draft board, and he's gonna be a first round selection. Where he falls in that 20 to 32 range could be some speculation to that, but I think he's a late first round draft pick. I think it's definitely likely that he could fall to the second round, but I think just looking at today's game, like you said, tight ends are relied on much more than, as pass catchers than blockers. Not everybody can be Jason Witten, but not everybody needs Jason Witten. And I think the Saints, their offensive line maybe needs a little bit of work, uh, but I think that the smart decision is to go with somebody who Drew Brees can throw the ball to, another weapon to keep that offense sharp, especially when you have a backfield like Kamara and Ingram, then you've got a lot of opportunities on the offense mm -hmm. to score. All right, so you guys heard it here. That our first ever mock draft. We'll see how uh, DJ's and Jeff's mock draft comes to fruition. And make sure you tune in next week where we'll have 2.0. Mock Draft 2.0. We're going to do this all the way leading up to April 26th. That's draft day. And that's going to do it for us. We're going to send it over, back over. DJ, you're going to take it, take it away. DJ and Zach Seiko, who will close out the show for us. Thanks, Christian. That's going to do it for us on this edition of Penn State Sports Night. Subscribe to our YouTube page and follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV. I'm Zach Seiko. And I'm DJ Bauer. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.